should be asking is, what grade am I getting in this class? Test number two is historically, and a lot of you found out, the hardest test this semester. And if you look at the way I grade the lowest test and final of those six scores, my five tests and the ACS all are equal. The lowest one of those are dropped. So all of you still have a good chance of getting a very good grade in my class if you didn't do good on this test. However, some of you will have a little more challenging route than others, but you still can do it. I've seen students do poorly on test number two and still get a very high score. Hopefully you did well on test one. And so how do you figure out your grade? Two ways. Look at either one of the tests and pick the higher score. If it's 80 or 90 to 100, it's an A. 80 to 89, B. 70 79, C, and so on as per my uh, syllabus. Or you can take the sum of test one and two, divide it by two, that number, if it's 90 and above, it's an A, 89B. Most of you will probably, except for a few of you, really will, either way it will work, but most of you will drop one, and that's what you're still getting. And that's by design. Test number two is the hardest test of the semester for most students. Therefore, don't get discouraged. However, if you really didn't do well, you have to relearn that material because it will be on the ACS and it will be on my test number five. How do you do that? Peer tutoring. Here at College of DuPage, they have it. Last couple of years, usually the peer tutoring for this class are my former students who have done quite well. And from the feedback I get, they help students who've gone to them for peer tutoring because what they do is go through my problem sets again. And also you can use the test as a problem set. Another thing I will ask, and don't raise your hands now, but any of you who did real, real well on test number two, if you'd like to be a volunteer and just talk to or even work with one of the students who needs a little help, come and see me probably tomorrow uh, after class or before class or sometime this week, not today because I've got to rush off. And I'll hook you up with one of the students who might need help. If you're one of the students who needs help, come and see me. I've done that in the past with good success. Some of it all it takes is someone who's done good someone who hasn't, but a person who didn't do, do well would ask the person who did do well, how do you prepare for a test? And that helps them. Or they, I've also had some semesters where a student will pair with someone else, and the better, or not better, the student who had the higher test score helps out the other one by working with them practicing. By the way, if you do that, and you're the student with the better test score, you get even better. Uh, when I started tutoring organic or teaching it for recitation as a grad student, that's when I started learning these general reactions so that I could do them in my sleep. Probably do, but anyways, um, any questions? Don't give up. Everybody still can do that. Oh, one other very important thing. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but I should mention it now. I never, ever, judge a person, a student in my class, by the score they get on a test or by the grade they get. I don't, because you don't know what kind of other outside forces are playing. I don't know if I told you the story, but at the other school I had a student took this class, first time failed it, a year later took it again with me, failed it, unfortunately, and a third time, and I'm thinking, oh, oh she does well. And since most of my students are women, you don't even know who I'm talking about. And it's at the other school. And she got an A. At the end of the semester, this is a true story, after the grades were out, she came back to say hello to me and wanted to explain, which I never asked because it's personal, but she wanted to tell me that the first time she took my class, she had major me medical problems, which I had no idea what was going on. She didn't tell me, nor did she have to. Second time, that's why she didn't do good. Second time, 
She had major family problems going on, major ones, which you can tell me, you said major. And that's also why she didn't do good that semester. And the third time, she did quite well. Because she didn't have any medical problems, no family problems, and was able to put in the time to study. And like I say, I never, ever grade a judge's student by their grade. All right, we've got time. Ooh, I've got some time to talk about carbon solar gas. Oh, important lab announcement. My memory serves me right, and I'm pretty sure it does. This week you'll be working on the alcohols lab. You'll be working with sulfuric acid. So everybody, you'll need to either wear a long sleeve top or bring a lab coat. Also, I would wear old clothes. I will, because whenever you're working with sulfuric acid or any strong acid, I wear old clothes. Also, if you have long hair, which my long hair days are long gone, uh, bring something to tie it back, because you never want to get acid on your hair. Because if you do, it breaks it down to the amino acids, which means you've got no hair, where it touched the acid. Anybody happen to look at a bottle of vinegar and think of acetic acid, which is a carboxylic acid? <coughs> now, if I remember correctly, I had talked about synthesis of alcohol, and I had given, I think, one or two examples. Did I do this one where I gave examples? I see. Well, let's do one more. You take a primary alcohol, because so I'm pretty sure I talked about uh, pints and how they use purchase ethanol to oxidize to make the acetic acid, which is about in everything they sell, or most of the things. And this is an oxidation since I gave you one already. I'm going through it. Let's do oxidize a benzene ring? The answer is no. Therefore, well, that's not that it right. Uh, therefore, what's the product or products are the following? Let you have some fun. You haven't had all morning yet. And if I look around the crowd, I should tell you that a number of your colleagues successfully used for this test the method, which eliminated test anxiety, but you still have to learn the material. Since I have to rush off to Elgin today, if I put on your note, on your test the notes, see me. See me tomorrow morning or sometime during the lab this week. And so good to see me, not bad to see me. All right, looks like everybody's done. And if we look at this, what is this Ben's aldehyde? Remember, that was the stuff you smelled. It smelled like either cherries or almonds. What is it? An aldehyde. Ah, I'm off on it. Sorry. I'm a slide ahead of me. Now I'll try this one. Apologize. That's the first time this semester I've been a slide ahead of me. their hand and said, what the heck are you doing? Or something similar.
All right, let's take a look at this. What's different? Hydrox group on carbon, or oh, primary alcohol. I'm oxidizing it. I move those two hydrogens, form a carbon oxygen double bond and aldehyde. Or no, carbon silicate acid. How do you know which? On this test, make sure you put down the carbon silicate acid. If I were to put it on my test slide, it could be either one, depending on the reaction conditions, which I don't teach you in this class. What's our isopropyl? What do we get? This carboxylic acid. Now let's go to the next slide. If you take an aldehyde and oxidize it, you can also get a carboxylic acid. You have to be very careful when you're oxidizing primary alcohols because it's hard, but if you use the right conditions, mainly cold, you can stop it at the aldehyde. I know I've done it. But if you really push hard, heat it up, or as we said, beat the heck out of it, you can oxidize very simply in aldehyde to carboxylic acid. And if I look at this molecule, what's different? Carbonyl, carbon double bond oxygen, hydrogen here, carbon's there, aldehyde. What's my R group? This. Here's my carbonyl carbon. It becomes this carbon. What's ever attached to it is still attached to it. I'll draw that first. That carbon was attached to it. CH3, CH2. And now I can do this one for you. I think everybody's done, but before I put the answer down, Ted, did you notice this morning, earlier, I kept my promise, and that was by test number two, I learned all your faces and names, because I got every test back right. Which is amazing, because I'm terrible with names and faces. All right, let's take a look at this. What's different? Well, benzene ring, oxidized, the oxidized, no. Well, aldehyde, yes. Aldehyde is oxidized to carboxylic acid. What's our my benzene ring? It's attached to my carbonyl carbon, which becomes a hydrox group. This is benzaldehyde. If you look at the bottle, when you were smelling it, or to opening it up to smell it, you'd see along the threads of the cap a white solid. And what is that white solid? Benzoic acid. Air is strong enough to oxidize this to this, and any vapors that came out of the bottle, usually right around the screw and the cap, become oxidized, and from a liquid benzaldehyde, you get benzoic acid. All right, tomorrow's lab, don't forget, you have